name is Omar. I work as a receptionist for University of London. My name is Abdul Baksh. My name is Glenn Jakes. I'm Ray Chango Lopez. Uh, I'm a porter. Munir Hussain. My name is Suraj Jo Martin. Well, I am in charge of the post room. Martin Trubowski. I work as a security officer for um, Cordon Security, contracted to University of London. When we started off, I was employed directly by the university, so the pay was pretty good. And after the first two years, they hired a company called OCS, and we all went over to OCS basically, and then things started to change from there. Normal week, I'm, I'm working from Monday to Saturday, 60 hours a week. There's, those are long days. In most countries, it's illegal to work more than 40 or 48 hours. If I look at the last few years, I would definitely say I was working like 70 plus hours a week. I do night most of the time, which is from 1900 hours to 070 hours in the morning. By the time I get home in the morning, uh, they are about, uh, my daughter, my son is about going out to school. That's all I can see. Then when they come back, I'm getting ready to leave. So we really hardly see at all except when I'm off duty, so, and uh, that's all about it. And even my daughter, who is uh, just 11, is not, is not happy with the situation, but I just have to say, well, we've got to put the food on the table and we've got to pay our rent, so. I cannot afford to have a house of myself, even though I still got three children, I still have to share a house. If I wasn't living at home, there's no way I'd be able to afford living in London, not on this salary anyway, because I still live with my mum, she's in her 80s. You're on a budget every day. Um, so you eat cheap lunch, you walk to work if you can, um, you save on everything that you can. The dispute here originated really in the London Living Wage campaign. Then there was an agreement that workers at the bottom level would move on to the London Living Wage and then all other workers would also move up at the same rate as the London Living Wage did. Had that promise been kept, then security officers, for instance, would be earning around 25% more than they do now. Enough is enough. We've been asking for them. To, we have, like, asked, we have struck all the channels. There's no progress. So this is, the, as you know, this is the last resort to go for a strike. And this has also been going on for the last eight, nine months. We tried talking to them. Um, initially, that's what we wanted. We wanted to sit down and talk. But um, Cordon, they don't want to talk with us. They, it seems like they don't care about us. Um, that's why we're striking. They say, well, the university are not giving us, giving us enough money to pay you, so you have to take out with them. And then they'll say, you have to go to the contract company to get more money. So you're just sent around in circles and you get nowhere. They either don't reply to our emails, they take the time, they take ages in solving the problem, which is really problematic because then the workers uh, are uh, very worried about their situation. They have to wait sometimes for weeks to get an answer. I think most people, when they understood what the real concerns of those security guards and what kind of money that they're on, I think they were very supportive, the vast majority of people. And that's why it's a real shame the university hasn't stepped in and actually told Corbyn to set out, uh, you know, to actually resolve this problem that they have caused. And most of the staff has been supportive, especially because we are in the front line in reception. Um, almost 80% of staff who pass by and they say, they agree with the um, situation. Given the amount of responsibility that they have and how valued they are by everyone that interacts with them, it seems only reasonable that they be paid in, in equivalence to that value and that responsibility. I mean, for the start of the uh, what's that, security going on strike, post room, porters, and possibly the uh, cleaners, it's going to have a major uh, effect. Obviously, we are fighting for the right cause. We are happy that we are. We are, we have one voice together. And somehow we have to make our voice heard. Definitely, we've got to win. We, we are optimistic, I'm optimistic, personally I'm optimistic, we've got to win. We've definitely got to win.